In yesterday's video, we talked about the company Mass Fusion and their tower in downtown Boston. I hinted that Mass Fusion was guilty of improperly disposing of their nuclear waste. This is why the public was engaged in mass sit-in protests at the Mass Fusion building. Well, today we are going to explore exactly how incompetently Mass Fusion disposed of their nuclear waste. And to do so, we will visit the Mass Fusion Containment Shed near Lake Quanapawit. Just outside the Mass Fusion Containment Shed, we find a Wicked Shipping truck. I talked about the Wicked Shipping Company in a separate video that you can watch here. In that video, we learned that the owners of the Wicked Shipping Company have been contracted by Mass Fusion to cart around some of their nuclear waste. Here in the back of their truck, we find some of their nuclear barrels. Eddie Winter then paid these guys to bring the nuclear material to him so that he could turn himself into a ghoul. But we'll explore that story in a video dedicated to Eddie Winter later. Just outside the Mass Fusion Containment Shed, we find a camp of super mutants. After disposing of these super mutants, we can loot a large duffel bag in the back and an ammo crate. Inside the containment shed are scores of nuclear barrels. The entire building gives off medium levels of radiation. Upon entry, you do have to deal with a couple of feral ghouls who, strangely enough, can't be looted after you kill them. Inside, we find a truck next to a forklift that looks like it had been in the process of being loaded with nuclear waste when the bombs dropped. Here we find a number of rad roaches. The story of this containment shed is located on a terminal in a room at the top of a gantry. Taking the steers up, you can hack the novice lock to read these terminals. In the first entry, we learn that an employee named Lester accidentally killed himself when he tripped and landed behind a forklift while it was backing up. This could very well be the forklift that we find loading barrels onto the truck. Because of this, Mass Fusion Corporate made them put a bunch of Remember Your Hard Hat posters up. This employee comments most cynically, like that would have saved his life. Indeed, we find a bunch of security posters all over the place. Eye protection with an image of goggles. It beats the sound of silence. Use ear protection. Moving parts can pack a pinch. Avoid getting drawn into working machinery. Keep your fingers out. Forgotten meters measure no radiation. And of course, better safe than sorry. I love the flat art of these posters, by the way, they're really well done. In the second entry, the employee begins to envy the dead. Mass Fusion is having a mandatory employee retreat, and this guy doesn't want to go and socialize. He says, now I have to pretend to like them for a whole weekend? Sometimes I envy Lester. The final entry is harrowing. A government hazardous material inspector stopped by unannounced. The employee speculates that the inspector is getting suspicious as to what's really been going on around here. He talked to his supervisor about the inspector and the supervisor said that if he starts catching on, we'll need to get rid of him. The employee says, well, he caught on and so we got rid of him. If anyone finds out what we did, they'll put me away for life. Oh dear, what did they do to this inspector? To find out, we use this terminal to unlock the locked security door below. Heading down and through the security door, we find even more nuclear barrels all stacked up in a row. Opening the gate and heading back to the main storage, we come around the corner to find a ghoul crawling out from a hole in the floor. After we dispatch this ghoul, we can inspect the hole in the ground, and it's here that we make a horrifying discovery. In the hole is a pipe with flowing water. A piece of scrap metal is gingerly placed on top of it, almost as if people were trying to hide it. Could it be that this is a water drainage pipe that drains into nearby Lake Quanapawit? Could it be that Mass Fusion is dumping their nuclear waste into a public lake? Surely the company wouldn't be that stupid. They can't possibly expect to get away with that for long. On the ground, we also find a gas mask and goggles. This feral ghoul crawled out of the pipe. What was he doing there? How did he get in there? My bet is that this was the government inspector. He discovered this drainage pipe and accused the employees of dumping nuclear waste into the nearby lake. 
To silence him, they incapacitated him, possibly thinking that they killed him, and then stuffed him into this pipe. But he wasn't dead. Instead, he absorbed radiation that they poured over him into the drainage pipe. This artificially extended his life, and for 200 years, he stayed stuffed in this pipe and turned into a feral ghoul. You know what the surprising thing about the story is? I'm surprised that in the Fallout universe, the United States government even has an inspector to make sure that companies are properly disposing of nuclear waste. That's the surprising thing. I'm not surprised that a company in the Fallout universe would murder an inspector and stuff him in a pipe. I'm more surprised that the government actually has the inspector to begin with. Also in this back room, we find a reactor with a fusion core in it, but we're not going to take it right now because directly across from the drainage pipe where we found the ghoul is a hatch that leads to a basement. In the basement, we hear a siren going off. Removing the fusion core upstairs will turn off this siren, but we're going to leave it on for now because we're going to cover this in an upcoming video on Radio Tower 3SM U81. We'll tackle this then. On the roof of the building, we find an interesting scene. We find a dead synth hunched over next to a leaning raider corpse. This is an odd position for a synth to be sitting in, especially a dead synth. How did these guys get here? Well, this, I think, is an Easter egg from the developer. It's most likely a reference to the ending scene in Blade Runner. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. Time to die. It's a nifty little Easter egg for Blade Runner fans, but I don't think it has anything to do with the backstory of this place. So, that leaves us with one question. Was Mass Fusion really dumping their nuclear waste in Lake Quanapowit? We will explore Lake Quanapowit and the Nahant Oceanological Society in later videos, which will more firmly answer this question. Instead, let's take a trip to the Mass Fusion disposal site to learn what Mass Fusion does in a panic. The Mass Fusion Disposal Site is just west of the Electric Hobbyists Club. The place stands out. From a distance, we find that the disposal site is a big, greenish-yellowish pond right next to a lake that has a normal color. What changed the color of this pond? Nearby, we find a truck covered in nuclear barrels. Some are marked and some are not marked. Strangely enough, these barrels do not emit radiation. Nearby, we find a forklift with a skeleton inside, and this site is inhabited by super mutants. They attack you from a nearby shack. and they built a treehouse for themselves that they've used to snipe people walking by. Once you clear the super mutants, you can properly explore the site. The unique thing about this lake is that it emits geysers. Companions will even remark upon this if you bring them with you. Those geysers, some kind of pressure release system? The barrels themselves, for some reason, do not emit radiation. Perhaps we are to assume that they leaked all of their nuclear material into the ground ages ago, and perhaps the rain has washed all nuclear material away from the barrels. But the lake itself is highly irradiated. If you walk into the lake, standing on the geysers gives you incredibly high doses of radiation. The lake itself is really shallow, so it's possible that this wasn't a lake to begin with. Perhaps it was just a shallow ditch, and Mass Fusion has been dumping their nuclear waste here over and over again for months, even years, and it's the waste itself that has formed a thin liquid that you can wade through. The Earth has soaked up so much of this that some sort of chemical reaction has occurred, causing 
geysers to bubble up in the middle. Perhaps the nuclear material is reacting to a layer of magma in the mantle, or maybe it seeped into a natural hot spring. But what we do know is that this answers the question for us. The place is called Mass Fusion Disposal Site. Instead of disposing of their nuclear material properly, maybe sealing it in an old abandoned salt mine deep underground, they've been dumping it in the open air just outside a major metropolitan area. With this evidence, I think there's no question that Mass Fusion was clearly dumping nuclear material into Lake Kwanapawit. They took no efforts to hide what they were doing, and that's why I think the citizens of Massachusetts were so outraged that they would show up in mass at the Mass Fusion building and engage in sit-in protests. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Mass Fusion and how they decided to dispose of their nuclear waste. You can watch my video on Mass Fusion here to get the full story of that company and their tower downtown. Stay tuned for future videos where we will cover other places that Mass Fusion has touched, including Lake Quanapawit, the Nahant Oceanological Society, and Radio Tower 3SM U81. Be sure to subscribe so that you get a notification when I publish those videos. What are your thoughts on mass fusion? Are you horrified with what they've done? Or do you think that it's a natural sacrifice for the sake of human progress? Let me know in the comment section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. If you'd like to chat about this topic with other like-minded individuals on the Oxhorn Community Discord server, be sure to click on the Discord invitation link that I've got for you in the description of this video. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here with me today watching this video. Thanks for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.